So I have come to this absolutely stunning scene. It's located actually just on the other side of the tunnel from Stocksnes. And if you haven't photographed it before, or you have probably just driven by it if you've been to Iceland and gone all the way around, I would really suggest that you stop and take this entire scene in because it is just magnificent. I think it's worth it. Incredible light. I'm literally on top of the world. One of the main reasons why I love the Icelandic landscapes as much as I do is because of how I relate to them. They feel ancient, they feel like they have a lot of history, they spark my imagination. And the Lausit Allure with the two mountain peaks Mosfeg and Blaikitindur is one of those locations which I just couldn't resist photographing as it looked like a scene straight out of Lord of the Rings. So, come to this place, which well, I haven't seen anyone photograph here before. And the goal is to photograph this mountain here. That's like my focal point. So, the tunnel from Stocksnes is literally just up here. It's super easy to find. You can't park on the first road. You just go to the next road here in the background. And then you just drive in there and you can park there. So this is a super simple and yeah, well, very drawing scene draws you in because of the triangular mountain. And you should by now know that I have a little fetish for triangular shaped mountains. So right now, this location here, they are like Beside this one mountain up here, it's actually a mountain too here. And both of them, like they almost look like twin mountains. So you can either use one of the mountains as a focal point or you can use both of them. What I'm going for right now is actually to find a foreground. Either a foreground which is just like a simple foreground or some kind of leading line that leads you into the scene. But I want to keep it fairly minimal and simple because the scene is like that. So I found this fairly simple composition with this little patch of, I think it's blackberries or something like that, in the foreground. And put my tripod down here, a little low, shooting at focal length of about 30. Now I put it on five second timer right now because the moss is a bit spongy, so two seconds isn't quite enough to get the camera to stand still and not shake. I'm shooting in aperture mode at f14, letting the camera decide the shutter speed, underexposing a little bit to keep the details and the highlights. I can always bring up the shadows if I need to do that. And, and that's basically it. A very simple shot, but oh, so moody and beautiful. I ended up with a composition that included both mountains. So we have these two very triangular mountains next to each other and with the valley in between. So there's also a little bit of moist in the air, a bit of raindrops. So I've attached my lens hood as to cover the front element of the lens as much as possible. And right now I'm just like taking a shot now and again because the scene keeps changing. Like you can see up here, they're like clouds forming on the top all the time. So I'm just like waiting 10 minutes or so to get the best possible picture with, with the details I like the most. After I returned home, I realized to my horror and disappointment I for some reason hadn't backed up my photos from the SD card. 
I've tried everything to restore them. I have no clue how I managed to skip the photos as I backed up the video from the cart, but I sadly did. Luckily I also visited this location while I was driving around with Nigel and I managed to get a couple of great photos from that day too. Both from the ground and from the drone, which I again can't stress enough, it's a fantastic little machine. It really opens up your possibilities to get closer to the locations and get new perspectives, which you wouldn't be able to get without. In this case I could fly even closer to the valley and use some of the streams as foregrounds leading into the scene. So I often hear that I might be a bit unoriginal with where I go, but obviously I'm making guide videos. So I go to the popular places. Well, I have a good excuse to go to the popular places, which are fairly easy to photograph because it has been done so many times. And that doesn't mean that of course I can't apply all the rules that I use in my photography. Of course, we see all these amazing places on the social medias and we relate to them because we see them again and again and again but i think we also relate to them because they are what they are they're grand they're big they're huge like i, I keep using the word epic but it is epic it's super super beautiful and we are an entire generation of well young photographers like I who have grown up in the 90s and the zeros with big epic blockbuster movies like Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Gladiator and so forth and they use all these locations so of course we relate to them we are a generation which which just love that kind of visual stimuli my photos are essentially a kind of world building using the real world. As Tolkien, the author of Lord of the Rings, and J.R.R. Martin, the author of Game of Thrones, draws inspiration and incorporate elements from the real world, so do I. Their stories and worlds are of course bigger and more complex than any of my photos, as they are also using language, history, geography, names, etc. As I've already mentioned in an earlier video, I'm not a documentarist. My photos are a manifestation of my imagination. You see the landscapes of the real world through my eyes. Landscapes with my imagination added to the scene. And my imagination is heavily influenced by the pop culture. In that way, my photography not only convey my imagination, but also the feelings and thoughts I have in myself. My videos are epic, and so is my photography. This is who I am, and my photos reveal that to a great extent. I'm not trying to be some hipster journalist photographer because that's not who I am or what influenced me to become who I am. Neither do I want to be a conflict photographer who tells horror stories from the world's conflict zones. That doesn't mean I don't have the utmost respect for the people using their camera in such a manner. I keep repeating it doesn't matter what techniques you use to create your art because that's not what's important. My goal is not to document but to create. I don't make photos for National Geographic and their arbitrary and changing rules for how you create a photograph. I make photos for myself using the tools I need. If I hear people complaining about how I edit my photos too much, they put their expectations upon my work and they completely miss the point. My point is to stay who you feel you are and do what makes sense to you and I truly believe your photography will flourish. So there's this old quote which goes something like if you want to know what people are afraid of losing see what they photograph and i guess that goes very much hand in hand with what i am photographing it's, it's this vast epicness which is so often present in, in fantasy novels and books, which I'm drawn to, and how, how boring the world would be without these big, immensely big natural phenomena, if you can call mountains, that there's probably way more people out there just like me listening to epic music 
while photographing and editing, watching lots of Game of Thrones on repeat, Lord of the Rings. So, that was it for now. Immensely beautiful scene, like, come on. To me, photography is also a tool for self-exploration and it has taken a lot of time for me to be able to just partly describe what influences and motivates me. My vision can of course also yield some photos with the same style or feeling as someone who has another vision, just as someone with the same vision as mine can create very different photos. So I'd love to hear what influences you and how that manifests in your photography. So thank you so much for watching, as always I would highly appreciate a like and comment down below. There's really not any right or wrong answer to this. I am just curious to hear how different people think about themselves and what they do, and I hope I can make you reflect upon it too, as that reflection has made me more aware about what I'm doing and made me more relaxed in my art.